Ethan Routson of the San Diego Padres organization and Fastball USA alum visited at Fastball USA this weekend and had this to say about his training time at Fastball. It changed my career. For I definitely would not be where I am without Fastball and uh, just being able to be just approach every day ready to work um, ready to figure out what works best for you and be the best version of yourself and I think that fastball offered all about those opportunities to me and uh, I genuinely like feel that uh, I wouldn't have had such an extreme passion for training in the game and um, the ability to get better had I not uh, signed up for fastballs. I have Ethan Routson, a uh, longtime fastball uh, kid uh, that's in the San Diego Padres organization now. Uh, this year played up the AAA and soon to be the major leagues. And uh, Ethan, it's good to have you with you today. Uh, wanted Ethan to talk to us today about his experience with Fastball USA. Uh, you started when you were 13 years old? Yeah, I started in seventh grade. Okay, so do you remember like uh, one of your motivated reasons for starting with Fastball by any chance? Yeah, uh, I was looking for a facility that was going to offer me an opportunity to become more athletic kind of uh, as I'm growing into my body and uh, as a naturally pretty unathletic and slow moving kid. This was like super appealing to me, especially at that point to figure out how to actually move better and move more athletically. So at first that was a big thing for me. Okay. So was velocity on the thing part part of that as well? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Trying to maximize velocity, maximize athleticism. Uh, those are two things that were super important to me at that point and being able to, uh, yeah, utilize all the tools here to be able to do that. So you started in your seventh grade, 13 years old. Mm -hmm. um, trained on a regular basis through high school and a little bit in college as well. Um, do you have any idea what your velocity was when you started by any chance? Uh, as a seventh grader, it uh, wouldn't have been too hard. Um, I mean, I want to say by the time I was a senior in high school, I would have gained about 15 miles an hour through fastball at least. Uh, so I'd be able to run and gun uh, about around 100 by the time I was a senior in high school. Um, I would have guessed by in middle school it would have been somewhere in, in the lower 80s mid 80s um at that point right. for a running gun right. so uh, okay yeah. you're like that you liked about fastball in terms of the training or the workouts things that jumped out, that jump out at you like that was definitely uh something that may have helped you in terms of either velocity or arm health or mm -hmm. you know, is there any like what did, what did you you know because obviously it's a lot of work <laughs> right? right so so what are the things that you were like, at, you know, because there's a reason why you stayed that long and, mm -hmm. and worked that long. So is there anything that jumps out of you, what you liked about it? Yeah, the throwing program was uh, super unique to me and I felt like really helped me um, be able to learn like what drills work best, how do I actually throw harder and uh, be able to comb combine the drills with mound work. It was something at that point I, I had never really seen before with being able to be offered this whole array of different uh, drills and ideas for throwing and be able to use all that combined and figure out what's best for me. How to, do I use these to throw harder and be a better pitcher in the end? Okay. And uh, obviously it helped helped you out. You have your, your, your story you went to Dallas Baptist University, Northwest Florida State. Uh, junior college on the St. John's University, mm -hmm. signed a professional contact, contract with San Diego Padres, um, has ma made it as high as AAA and uh, the, really the best statistically reliever in the Padres organization. Uh, and I know that's a lot, but did you have any advice for younger guys, younger guys who want to start and train with Fastball USA in terms of you know, what to focus on. I know everybody's different, but uh, any kind of advice you would have for the younger guys that are thinking about signing up with Fastball USA that uh, you, you can give them some advice on what to do. Yeah, um, just, I mean, it changed my career. For I definitely would not be where I am without Fastball and uh, just being able to be just approach every day ready to work um, ready to figure out what works best for you and be the best version of yourself and I think that fastball offered all that, those opportunities to me and uh, I genuinely like feel that 
uh, I wouldn't have had such an extreme passion for training in the game and um, the ability to get better had I not uh, signed up for fastball as a seventh grader. Well, I, I can tell you this. Uh, through the years, you're definitely one of the hardest workers we've ever had in here, by far. Uh, but working hard is one thing. Also one of the more focused guys that we've ever seen in here. Uh, and that's a compliment to you. Um, as you guys um, as you guys know, and, and the parents who are watching this know that um, you know, success comes with ups and downs. Uh, and Ethan has showed us, you know, throughout the years that um, he really perseveres through everything that, that you've gone through, through high school. Uh, I think you had an injury at one point in time in high school. You came back from that. Um, you went to a couple different schools, went through that. Uh, and, and it's just kind of a, you know, huge, huge compliment to you in terms of your focus and training and everything. Uh, you, you've kind of been through a lot of stuff. Um, is is there any advice you have for guys who are getting uh, maybe to that senior year in high school into into college specifically um, in regards to distractions, things to focus on, things to watch out for, I guess you could say, especially when you get to uh, that senior year of high school, that late in high school, mm -hmm. any, any kind of distractions that – um, you know, it take a player away from really focusing on getting better. Yeah, um, understand that the game doesn't last forever. Uh, you don't get to just keep playing this until the end of time. At a certain point, there's an expiration date. So um, you're going to have to understand like what you need to do to be able to achieve your dreams, whether that's uh, as simple as college or um, to play college or to play professionally or play in the big leagues. Like you have to, as early as you can start right now, like go ahead and start as early as you can to um, figuring out what you need to do and what's important to you and how you think uh, you can actually achieve these goals. Correct. And then, guys, just kind of a side note here, Ethan became um, one of our players who became a 100-mile-an-hour athlete, and he actually did it even though he's a pitcher. Uh, Ethan did this with uh, both swinging a bat and hitting a baseball, uh, going uh, on an athletic pull down throw over 100 miles an hour, I think 102, hitting a ball over 100 miles an hour, um, which is, in a sense, something he developed over his high school career. Um, and, and, and again, which is impressive enough, but probably equally as impressive, learning how to blend speed and precision together. Uh, at some point in time, I know you weren't necessarily necessarily a really good strike thrower, mm -hmm. but it's ironic as your organization, as your organization, as your career has progressed. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons why it has progressed is because your ability to throw strikes, mm -hmm. your ability to uh, combine speed and precision, which mm -hmm. is a big thing that we believe here at Fastball is that it's it's really a trifecta. It's arm health, it's command, it's velocity, all rolled into one. Mm -hmm. um, is there anything specific that you um, – would advise guys in terms of developing command and velocity together? Is there some, anything that jumps out at you like that you would uh, tell a guy that need to, you know, train and watch out for? Yeah, absolutely. Both, uh, both can a hundred percent go hand in hand. I mean, as you, if you're a guy that doesn't throw hard and you're trying to up your velo numbers, you don't want to just blindly be throwing, uh, <clears throat> every, every time you pick up a ball, you right. want to have, a specific goal, a target. Right. Uh, it's just as simple as that, where you're not wasting any throws. It's like every throw, no matter what it is, even if it's a running gun, it's like, all right, I'm going to throw it through that specific spot. Right. And that's where it starts over time. Then the that's where the precision comes. Because maybe it's not perfect at first, but if you have that goal and that mindset as you progress and keep throwing, that's only going to get better. Okay. And, and I brought that up for a purpose of uh, out there. I know there's a lot of young players out there who are chasing velocity. Um, and they treat it like something separate. Like they treat it like I'm chasing velocity and now they're not working on command or they're working on command only when they're really not there for velocity yet, right? Mm -hmm. So something for people to consider. Uh, and lastly, the healthy we are, the harder we throw. You know, it's, 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 if you're not healthy, it doesn't uh, come together. Um, to close out, can you speak on terms of your opinion about how important it is for players to have a good um, recovery program in terms of getting back to, I guess, 100% so they can mm -hmm. go perform. Is there anything that you could talk to them about health and recovery? Yeah, um, I mean, it's unbelievably important. Uh, I mean, health is the only way you can play the sport. So uh, you have to take your arm care seriously and your recovery days seriously. You can't just 
go out there and if you're a guy that's uh, in high school chasing velocity, it, you can't just go the, and throw seven days a week as hard as you can because at a certain point, one, you'll, you're ri completely risking injury, and then two, um, you're, yeah, you, you actually are probably going to start throwing slower if you're not getting hurt from that. So you need, really need to focus up and think about what my arm needs for recovery after each of my throwing sessions, and then in between my push days, what am I doing to make sure that uh, I'm going to be ready for that and that you're not doing too much on those days that you need to rear back, back a little bit. Okay. Well, we appreciate you having here, Ethan. Ethan came in tonight, uh, talked to our uh, fastball kids, current kids, which is awesome that you gave him the time for that. Uh, very inspirational. Um, and again, I can't reinforce you guys enough. Uh, parents are always like looking for the best thing. Uh, I always say nothing will work unless you do. Ethan's a great example of how hard work and focus, uh, and I know everybody thinks they work hard, but this is definitely one of the hardest workers I've ever uh, been around. So uh, Ethan, I think you started at 13, 14, played for team fastball actually as well, uh, and then had a great college career, and then you know more great things to come for you. We really appreciate you coming out. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate it. Yeah.